What up, players? It's Warboss Tay back up in this mug doing another little combing through of the latest Warhammer preview. And this one is going to take a look at the Age of Sigmar Broken Realms army sets. In particular, we're going to look at Horex Dreadlance. This is from the Warhammer community website. Speaking of the War Scroll battalions that feature in Broken Realms Techless, four new army sets are coming alongside the book. These sets are the Invidian Plague Host, Sintil War Magi, Mortavel's Hellcourt, and Horex Dreadlance. They include a selection of key units inspired by the book's narrative, as well as saving you money compared to purchasing them individually. The units in each box can be fielded together in battle using their matching War Scroll Battalion in Broken Realms Techless. These narrative-driven rules let you represent the actual combatants and offer them unique abilities that match the way they fight and the heroes that lead them. And unfortunately, there's no hint of when they will be available for pre-order, and we have no clue as to what the cost is going to be. I think that when you take a look at each of the separate units that are included in each of these army sets, you're going to have very different price tags for these four boxes. And because we're looking at the Horrix Dreadlands today, I want to break down what comes in that box. Now the first thing that I noticed was that these models are painted a lot differently than the classic Osiark Bone Reapers color scheme. For the first thing, you don't have that iconic Nagash dark purple armor plates. These are silver armor plates, which make the color tones a lot more muted. The range of color now comes from the bone, which goes from the Osiark Bone Reapers of the classic bleached bone to this more red-ish tinged bone that I don't know if I'm such a huge fan of. They complement it with the plum purple color on the banners and they contrast it with the green on the shields. I don't know. It is not as interesting. I think the classic Osiark Bone Reapers color scheme is a lot more interesting. And today we're going to take a look at what those are and I'm going to give you my thoughts. So you're going to get two boxes of Cavalos Death Riders. That's $60 each. And you're going to get one commander, the Liege Cavalos. So combined, that's going to be $170 if you were to buy every model separately, all these boxes separately, three different kits. We'll see what the actual price is going to be. But the Liege Cavalos, all right, guys, I've given the Osiark Bone Reapers a bunch of flack saying that I don't really care for their cartoony aesthetic and I don't like the way they've taken my beloved undead and vampire counts and turned them into this weird gothic sci-fi fantasy Frankenstein looking army. I am slowly coming around. I don't think I'm ever going to love the look of them, but I, I found a reason to not hate them. And that is, I used to love watching He-Man when I was a little boy. In fact, we had a dog and his name was He-Man because <laughs> he was this big beefy, beefy boy. And seeing this guy just instantly brings back to my mind Skeletor and his voice and his mannerisms and just how cartoonish he is and when you see this model there are a lot of miniatures in the Osiark Bone Reapers that have this weird crazy mad scientist looking uh, aesthetic to them and this guy is no different for the first thing his mount I just realized when I'm looking at it putting together this video has three tails three vertebrae spiny tails and everything about this model just screams 80s morning cartoon villain. And now that I've let go of the attachment I had to the old vampire account, I can appreciate these for what they are. A creative side jaunt by the designers to come up with something completely original that went outside the boundaries of anything that had ever been seen before. I mean, they were able to practice with all the crazy craziness of the Necrons in 40k, but you're talking about using that aesthetic and instead of using robots and living metal, how do we shape these models to look like they were molded together by some mad evil genius to look like this bone construct? And that's what these are. So here are your Cavalos Death Riders. And for $60 for five of them, I think they actually have a lot more detail than a lot of comparable boxes that are sold for $60. Like the, as much as I love the Ogre Mornfang Cavalry, these five models have a lot more detail packed into every single facet. 
from the mount to the skeletons on the mounts and all of the bone details on every every part of these miniatures and notice how they're painting the bones different colors like the accents on this guy's armor is painted in a gray sandy tone whereas the mount itself is more of a light bleached bone beige color and I mean just look at the teeth on this thing it's so weird and different and the fact that he's painted with uh, spirits powering him so in conclusion am I ever going to start collecting these guys will they supplant the vampire counts or the new soul blight grave lords as they're called as my favorite undead army I don't think so I appreciate what they're doing and I finally warmed up to the idea that I'm not supposed to take these guys seriously as models because they don't fit a serious look in my mind. Even the, the big commander model that they've got, like that looks like the big green god that like uh, Dr. Manhattan, if he was made out of uh, Oreo mint ice cream. These guys just look cartoony to me and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that because a lot of... 40k style. I love orcs and goblins and they're ridiculously cartoony but these guys were never meant to supplant the vampire counts and if they were if they were meant to <laughs> to supplant the vampire counts as people's favorite undead army then yeah they did a terrible job because a lot of people who used to collect vampire counts I've heard they they're not fans of the OCR bone reapers it takes a different mindset to decide to start collecting them and that's okay you can totally be in love with these models and also have an appreciation for the old vampire counts or the new soul blight grave lords as they're called or you can go vice versa and really love the old vampire counts aesthetic with the ghouls and the uh, vampires and the skeletons and the zombies and then also tolerate having the Osiarch Bone Reapers. It's like having a big Thanksgiving dinner and you have all your favorite friends and family and then you've got that one uncle that you tolerate. You probably wouldn't hang out with him if it wasn't family, but you're not going to go out of your way to uh, really be on his good side. I don't know. This metaphor is getting away from me. Igor! Yes, master. Close us out. Thank you for joining us today, everyone. I have to say that I quite disagree with the Master. I believe the Osiak Bone Reapers are disturbingly, morbidly macabre and wonderful. And as a crypt ghoul myself, I believe that all undead are beautiful. <laughs> Alright, thanks Igor. We'll see you guys in the next one.